Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to Prescott Valley Bible Church Wednesday Night Oasis. Wednesday Night Oasis. It is Wednesday, June 23rd. Wednesday, June 23rd. Half the year is just about over. We're coming up to the starting of the second half of the year. Man, what is going on? What happened? Uh, things really... Uh, have fl flown by, I guess flown is the right word, flown by. Uh, we are in the final message in this series of the 301 class. Last week, uh, I didn't realize it, but some uh, I had some people say that uh, their video that they watched from last week was all jumbled up, and I was talking 100 miles an hour. I mean, that you couldn't even understand what I was saying. It sounded like a cartoon character or something. So we're going to go back to that at last message here and talk about that today. Uh, so I'm sorry uh, you had that issue. Um, please feel free to let me know uh, as soon as you run into that. You're not, uh, uh, you're not bothering me by letting me know that there's a problem with the video. So let me know that because we're trying to make it the best we can. Of course, Wednesday nights, we can't be together uh, because we don't have the opportunity yet because of the school and being able to get in there. But we are there on Sunday mornings. So for those of you who are watching from home, we are physically there on Sunday mornings and everything is really uh, back to normal, if you will. Uh, so... Uh, Praise the Lord for that. Uh, right now, uh, we, we tell people on Sunday morning, uh, no hugging, uh, you know, during the greeting time. But uh, July's coming, you know, and it's, it's uh, Independence Day. You know, time to do that. Time to get back to normal. So uh, you be ready for that as well. So uh, thanks for being with us today. Hey, we left off last week, or the week before, I should say. Uh, talking about uh, using our spiritual gifts, right? We've been talking about that through this whole series. And uh, we talked about uh, our personalities and how there were A and B type personalities. Uh, I hope you remember that. One was an introvert. One was an extrovert. Uh, the introvert is the person who would rather read a book and be by themselves off in the corner. The extrovert is the one that walks into the building and, hey, everybody, I'm here. You know, that kind of personality. There's not one that's better than the other, not one that is, uh, um, um, well, better than the other. Uh, they're, they're both great, you know. And in fact, last time we were together, I said that in some circumstances, all of us have the ability to be one or the other. So uh, our main, our main uh, uh, characteristic is that maybe that we are uh, extrovert. We're one that, uh, boy, the life of the party, that kind of thing. Here I am telling jokes and greeting everybody they see. Uh, but then they find themselves in a place where they feel uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, uh, they're the ones sitting off in the corner. And so each one of us has that ability to be one or the other. So uh, before we throw stones at anybody, uh, we just know that we have a little bit of each one of us and one of those things in both of us. And so it's just a matter of we're talking about what is the main, uh, you know, personality trait. And that, so the question that we came up with when we left last time was... Um, can our personality, can my personality um, be a factor in serving God? Can I, you know, um, can, it, can it play a role in serving God? And the answer is yes, uh, of course, because uh, we need to use our giftedness and our personalities and our uh, natural traits all together to work for God, to serve God. So uh, people who are introverts 
are probably not people who are interested in um, being a greeter at the door, you know, greeting people and stuff, because that's just not how they're made up. But now doing things behind the scenes, that might be your thing. That might be what you feel comfortable doing, you know, let me help with editing or help with uh, setting up equipment or, or doing some technical stuff. I mean, whatever it would be. So both are equally as important. Uh, it's just when you're considering how God is going to use you, uh, you know, your personality sometimes affects what you will be uh, um, led to do. You know, um, now the, the problem that we have, and as this is with anything, that if a person doesn't do uh, what God calls them to do because of their uh, personality or their giftedness or their spiritual giftedness, um, then someone else has to do it. And sometimes they are not gifted where they're doing it, but let's face it, things have to get done and people step up and they step in and they do the best they can. But uh, the question you have to always ask yourself is, uh, am I doing my part? So can my personality uh, affect other people? Well, yes. Uh, as a group, um, I want us to just think about this for a minute. Think about yourself and think about the people that are around you and think about how do you affect those people around you? I mean, do you have the ability to affect other people's lives with your personality? I know that um, the answer is yes. Because there are people that um, I find that I just love being around um, because they get me excited about stuff. They get me, uh, you know, um, really uh, involved and, they, and they're that type of person. And then there are others that um, are maybe sometimes on the always negative side and bringing people down. So are you a lifting people up or a bringing people down type of person? I mean, that is not really a, a personality trait. That's a learned behavior uh, that we have. So maybe we should allow ourselves to uh, ask uh, ourselves, well, well, how do I feel when I'm always looking at the glass half empty instead of half full? How does it make you feel? And then understand that you have control over that um, and it affects your own personality. Because uh, I love everyone, but you know, there are some days when uh, I don't really want to talk to anybody. Now, hopefully, now those days are very far and few between, but uh, there's, there's been days in my life where uh, I just uh, want to hide in a corner and be by myself. And I think you all get what I'm saying. It happens often when I'm on like an airplane or I'm someplace out in public and uh, I start talking to people or sitting in a plane and the person next to you, and I've had this happen many times, they say, what do you do for a living? I say, I'm a pastor. And uh, so, for the next two hours, I'm in a counseling session. You get what I'm saying, right? I'm counseling them or being counseled by them. You know, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. So sometimes I'm tempted to say, uh, uh, I'm retired and I don't do anything ever. But you can't do that. So the question becomes, um, how about your experiences? Can God use your experiences to further the kingdom? 
uh, in this last section that we're talking about, I want you to ask yourself, how can God use your past experiences to further his kingdom? How about even bad experiences? Uh, what does the Bible say about it? Because that's really what we want to get to. So does God use past experiences to further his kingdom? See, our life is a series of choices. Some good, some bad. Uh, whether good or bad, every decision is an important lesson for life. Some of the best lessons I've ever learned were based on poor choices that I made. And uh, they were lessons that stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Stuck with me. In James chapter 1, verses uh, 2 through 4, here's what it says. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. See, many a times in our lives, we forget um, that God is continually refining us. The Holy Spirit can bring to remembrance the things that, that we've studied in the past, and the Holy Spirit can bring us to remember the things that you have learned in your life through life lessons. Man, I've been through this before, and I don't want to go through it again. Or I, I've seen how this works, and, and you know, sign me up. See, that's, that's how life lessons work, the things that we do. So let me ask you something. Um, I want you to think about this for a second. And you could even put this video on pause for a second. But here's the question. Name um, three or four ways God can use your past experiences to further his kingdom. Think about that. What's happened to you in, pa in the past that God can use to further the kingdom? So what now? What now? Let's summarize for a few minutes what we've learned in this series and discuss the information that we talk about being helpful. Discuss ways, we're going to discuss ways um, you can use your spiritual gifts, your heart, your ability, your personality, and your experiences to further God's kingdom. So, Today, we're going to look at how each one of us are spiritually shaped. We said that shape stands for spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personalities, and experience. If you put those words next to each, below each other, the first letter will spell the word shape. Our shape plays an important role in, in who we are, and how we can serve God most effectively. So, the important thing to remember is that the spiritual gifts are important to the body of Christ. Something more important than knowing how your gift is, uh, it, something more important is knowing how your gift needs to be committed to the body of Christ. It's not something just for us. It's something to share with the, with the rest of the body. So God has brought his people together to serve him in the place we attend church. So friends, listen, <clears throat> if you have been missing because um, of the virus and you have been missing now because you're late, want to go to church because you haven't gone for a year. Uh, you just have to know that God has gifted you spiritually to use those gifts in the body. And when you don't do that, here's what God says. 
use the gifts I've given you, otherwise I'll take them away and I'll give them to someone else. We had somebody at one time that I knew um, that was a worship leader. Not our worship leader, so don't start trying to figure this out. But he was a worship leader who played the guitar. Not our worship leader, someone else. And we had a worship leader. This worship leader never really knew how to play the guitar very well but decided to step up to become the worship leader at a church. He played the first Sunday. And I remember a conversation because he said, my God, I, I don't even know how to play the guitar. And I played better than I have ever played in my whole life. That somehow I was playing and leading and singing isn't God amazing and then he went on to be the worship leader and do that and he did this for a year and a half two years something like that until something happened uh, the something that happened was that well things are not I'm in charge, and things are not exactly as I want them to be. And then uh, his wife became a nut, and uh, so uh, they left their church. They stopped doing that, and I had a conversation with him after that. And he says, Pastor Andy, I don't understand. I says, what don't you understand? The minute I stopped being the worship pastor at this church, I couldn't play the guitar anymore. You see, friends, God gifts us in certain ways, and if we don't use those gifts, he'll take them away, and he'll give them to someone else who will use them. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 7. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Holy by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of ministries, but the same Lord. There are a variety of effects but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit of God or the Spirit of the common good. Now move over to 1 Peter 4.10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. You see, the body is strong. And it's only as strong as its members. And when God has gifted a person to use their gifts in the church body, and they don't, and not only does it hurt themselves, but it hurts the whole body that suffers because the gift was supposed to be used is held back for whatever personal reasons. See friends, everyone suffers when you don't use the gifts that God has given you. So let me ask you something. In this series, the whole series that's been going on now for four or five weeks, um, what stood out in your mind the most? What did you learn about yourself? I remember when we took that 
uh, that uh, assessment. I, I remember talking to people on Sunday that said, I took the assessment, but I, I'm not gifted in anything. Well, yes, you are. And so you need to really, uh, first before you go back, go back and do that again and really pray uh, that God would remove all of the um, oh, preconceived ideas that you have about yourself and be honest with yourself. Look, it, it, I said in that message back uh, when we did that, add the scores up and look at the ones that are 20 and above. And I had some people say, well, I, I scored, the highest score I scored was 18. Well, that's good. There's nothing, there's nothing spectacular about the number 20. So if your highest scores were 18 or 19 or 20, uh, look at those and see what those areas are that, that you might be gifted in or those areas that you might be, yeah, spiritually gifted in. And then think about your own experiences and think about your own talents and ask yourself, how can those things work together to further the kingdom and to help me be uh, the best that I can be? So do that. Now, um, our church has been going on now for, for quite some time. And I'm asking everyone to consider um, how can you use your gifts at PVVC? And I know that for some of you, you think, well, I don't know. I come to church and, and uh, everything is all set. Everything is ready to go. And so I don't need to jump in and get involved. And the truth of the matter is, there's stuff that we can do at church, stuff we can do outside of church that we need to get started to help do. Uh, but uh, the, the, the problem that we have is that we cannot go into it thinking, yeah, we really need to do this, this, and this. Uh, come on, Pastor Andy, get with it. Um, so we need to ask ourselves, what are the things that the church needs that we're not doing or that I don't know about? And how can I get involved? How can I be a part of that? Because there are so many things that as a body of believers that we can do. But if we leave it to the elders or leave it to Pastor Andy to do it, uh, it's not going to be done very well, and we don't want to do anything that's going to discredit the ministry. So we partner with different people, we partner with different organizations, and if you feel gifted in doing something that we personally don't do, we are gifted, we have partnerships with other groups that you can get involved with. And I know some of you are doing that and praise the Lord because uh, that's an outreach of the church you belong to as well. And so maybe maybe you need to, to speak up and let us know what those things are that you're doing outside the church because we can help get other people hooked up with you to help do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, be a part. Make a commitment. Uh, think about how you'll serve. I mean, um, we, we, we're, we're lacking in youth. Uh, we don't have youth, youth groups and children's uh, uh, really in our ministry. We have some that show up uh, maybe once a month. And, uh, you know, but those are actually ministries we can do stuff with. Uh, you know, sound technician, uh, you know, Robin, God bless him. He does a great job with, with all the other stuff he's doing, but he'd be the first one to tell you that if we had somebody who was willing to be a sound person who actually doesn't wear a hearing aid or can hear, that would be an awesome thing for us. 
uh, greeters. Listen, you know, uh, uh, we're a smaller group, but as we continue to grow, we're going to need greeters at the doors and do those things. And so if you're interested in doing that, look, everybody right now, if you're gifted in that, you're an automatic greeter because there's nothing greater for new people coming in to have people coming up to them and acknowledging who they are. We want to be that. Um, we could use people who are willing to make phone calls and follow up on people. We need people who are part of prayer teams. Now, uh, I have a list of people that I send out prayer requests to, and for the most part, uh, everybody is awesome at that. But as we grow, I don't want to be sending out um, 50 or 60 or 70 or 100 prayer request people to 100 prayer group request people as things come up. So we can create something there if you're willing to be a part of that. Um, you know, uh, right now we're not doing the baking and stuff like that, but bringing cookies in or bringing something into the church, but we're not doing that right now. But when we start, we're pretty much into that kind of thing. Uh, Bible study teachers, um, special event decorators. When we do different things, we need people willing to come in and help decorate like for Christmas and that type of thing. Um, staging, setting stuff up, setting up equipment, um, Sunday school leaders, uh, encouragement teams, people who are willing to encourage others, uh, you know, transportation people. Sometimes we get phone calls, we have the van, and we pick people up in the van, but uh, you might have a neighbor that would love to come to church, but they have no way to get there. Wouldn't that be awesome if there was a way you could do that? Um, the list goes on and on. Worship team, uh, you know, the uh, special events cooks, uh, visitation ministry. We really don't have much of that. And, uh, you know, that would be awesome because right now that's being handled just by a few people, just by a few people. So here's how I want to end this. You know, um, God has really blessed each one of us with natural born gifts, with spiritual gifts that he's given us, with past experiences, uh, which are so valuable. Um, I can't tell you that even in my role in this church, that your past experiences truly help me to serve God in a way he's calling me to. And so be willing to share those things. Be willing to reach out to others to be a resource for one another. Because our goal is simple. It's to lead people to Jesus. It's to help each other to grow in our faith and to grow in wisdom and to become all that God is calling us to be. The only way that we'll be able to do that is if everyone steps up and does what God has prepared them in advance to do. I hope you got something out of this series. The next series is going to be pretty darn good. And I hope you stay and you watch that as we continue in the future weeks to come. Um, I think we're going to move to the 401 class after this. And so... Um, Get ready for that. Uh, so let's pray as we close. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. And uh, I'll see you Sunday. Well, Saturday. Hey, Saturday, uh, the 26th, uh, Lynx Lake South Entrance at the park area there where the tables are and the cabanas or whatever you call them. Uh, where all those are, we're going to be meeting there about 1030. 
having lunch at 1130, bring something with you to, for everybody to, to share, to share with everyone. And uh, we'd love to have you there. Fried chicken, uh, rolls and potato salad and macaroni, baked beans. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different stuff coming. So you come be a part uh, for this time of fellowship. Um, it'll be nice. So you be a part. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time. Be with us, guide us, and direct us in all that we do. Help us to grow in the knowledge of who you are and how you are working in our lives. In all things, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Thanks for being with us.